Philippians 3, you pray for us tonight that the Lord would help us to be a blessing. We can't be a blessing without the Lord's help. I was on our way down here tonight and Andy and Lena were in the car with us and we was just talking and as all he, he was talking to stay awake, I think. He was getting sleepy coming down here. And uh, he said, Grandpa, I'm going to start calling you preacher man. I said, that's all right, buddy. You call me, that'll be all right. But uh, good to be here tonight. Philippians 3, I want to pray before we read. Father, thank you tonight for the privilege it is to be here in the house of God. We thank you, Brother Robert, uh, Lord, calling on us to preach tonight. I want to thank you for the opportunity. God, every time we get to stand, it's a blessing. And I pray you'd help us to be a blessing tonight. I realize, Lord, we can't do anything without your help. We must have your help. And we ask you for it. I pray you just uh, bless, Lord, the remaining preachers. We thank you for the message we've already heard for these songs. We thank you for this church. And I pray you continue to bless it and use it, God, for your glory and for your honor. I thank you for my youngest son, my wife and I's youngest son, and family going here. And what a blessing. And thank you for the grandchildren, what they're learning as well. And I just want to thank you for being so good to me. And help us right now as we look at your word, help us to say what we need to say, Lord, and not say anything that we shouldn't say. Thank you for the young men quoting the scripture. That was a blessing as well. And God just used them and all of us to be a, a light in this lost, dark, sinful world. And we'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate every individual and all the men of God that are here. And uh, we sure do desire your prayers. Philippians 3 is very familiar uh, to most of us, I'm sure, and I doubt I'll say anything that's, that's, that you've not heard before, but I want to remind you of some things that the Lord's laid on our heart, and I want to be an encouragement to you tonight. Philippians 3, verse 10, Paul writes, and he says, that I may know him and the, fe and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after it that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All of us are familiar with this, or the majority anyway, and I love this scripture, and God really had it on my heart lately. And you know, I've thought a lot about this thing of living for the Lord, and, and I want to finish right. I want to finish right. I want to encourage you tonight uh, to finish right. It's important that we get started right. I know that, but I want to finish right. I don't know how much time I've got left, uh, but I want to live it for the Lord, finish right. Just a few things Paul said here. Let's look back over these verses for here just a few moments. That I may know him. Now, Paul was saved. Paul knew the Lord. We read about his conversion in Acts chapter number 9. What a blessing that is. How he met the Lord on the road to Damascus. I believe, I believe he enjoyed telling that as well. But uh, thank God he knew the Lord. But I believe what he's saying is I want to know more about him. I want to encourage us all tonight that as we, as we read and study that we might have a desire in our heart. I believe Paul did to want to know more about the Lord. I want to learn more about him. Page number six in the old Redback Church hymnal says, I want to know more about my Lord. I pray that's your heart's desire. That was Paul's heart's desire. Something about knowing more about the Lord. <clears throat> the more I learn about him, the more I love him. Amen. I've never been disappointed learning more about the Lord. Now, there's been some folk that I've met in my life, and I'm sure you could say the same thing. That the more I learn about them, the more I wish maybe I had never met them, you know. But I've never been disappointed in the Lord. I want to know more about him. I believe that's what he's saying. And then he said, and I want to know about the power of his resurrection. The older we get, the more we realize how much we need God's power. When we're young, and I'm not knocking anybody that's young tonight, but I'm just saying I, I know what it is. I've been there. A lot of times you think you can handle it. You know, I, I've got enough strength to do what I need to do. And, and, you know, I don't know how much I need the Lord's help, but I'll tell you something, I've learned that I need his power in my life. The power of his resurrection, just think about that. My mind can't fathom it, but I think about the power. Thank God, God raised our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, raised that body from the dead, thank God. Oh, I'm glad of that. The power, Paul said, I want to know him, but I want to know more about the power, God's power in my life. Somebody said years ago, I don't remember who it was, but they said, I can't function without the unction. Boy, that's very true, isn't it? We need God's power. And then he said, I want to know more about the fellowship of his sufferings. And this sounds strange, really. I mean, I'm not knocking the word of God. Don't take that that way. But 
When, I, when he says, I want to know more about the fellowship of his sufferings, that kind of sounds a little strange to me, but I believe what he's saying is this. When there's more suffering, there's more fellowship. That's right. That's right. Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter, and uh, he, he knew what it was like to suffer, and he knew what it was like to know the fellowship of the Lord. If you and I had been in Paul's position, most of us wouldn't have been in that position probably, but if you and I would have been in Paul's position, we would have wanted people writing letters to us, trying to encourage us in the Lord, trying to be a blessing uh, to us if we were in prison. But Paul, listen, he, he knew what he wrote when he was talking about in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So he says, I want to know that fellowship. Now, you and I may not suffer as Paul did, but listen, we, we suffer through other things, sometimes sickness and Maybe persecution in the family or at work or, or things like that. Maybe financial problems or family problems. But if we'll lean on the Lord, thank God we'll experience more fellowship. More fellowship. God's grace is sufficient. I don't know what you're going through tonight, but I want to tell you something. God's grace is sufficient. You say, what's that mean, preacher? It means it's just as much as you need. It's just as much as you need. You might say, preacher, but I need a whole lot. I want to tell you something. He's got a whole lot. God's grace, God's help, God's love is sufficient. So that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings. Being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. I don't claim to know it all. I, I know far from it, but I'm glad for what the Lord has taught me. Amen. But listen, being made conformable to his death. You know, Jesus Christ prayed and he said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. That ought to be our prayer. Whatever, whatever we, we're going through in our life, we ought to say, Father, not my will, but thine be done. It's important that God get glory out of our situation. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, I believe he's saying, I, I, don't, I don't know what exactly I'm going to go through. None of us know exactly what we're going to go through before we leave this world. And I'm, I'm glad of it, amen. But I tell you one thing, I'm going to attain to that resurrection of the dead one day. God's going to raise us. And then he said in verse 12, not as though I'd already attained. We, we've not received that glorified body. We, we've not experienced that yet. And then he said either we're already perfect. Paul said he wasn't already perfect. When I read that, I think, I think about the fact that one of the greatest writers in the Word of God, under the inspiration of God, of course, but he said I'm not perfect. Well, I think that'd do us good to think about that tonight. And I'm not saying you think you are, but none of us are. We're not perfect. We've not attained yet everything that God wants us to do, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I'm not perfect. He said, but I follow after. I'm following after something. I'm following after, if that I may apprehend that, for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. I used to read that verse, and <laughs> man, that's, a, that's something to think about right there. But I believe what he's saying is this, I'm following after, that I may apprehend, that I may lay hold on whatever it is God's got a hold of me for. If I can just get a hold of whatever it is God's got for me to do in my life, that's what I want to lay hold of. Amen. I want to follow after that. I want to tell you something. There's all ages here tonight. All ages. Can I just share some with you tonight? The, the, the best place, and I'm speaking to myself as well, the best place you and I can be tonight is in the perfect will of God for our life. Amen. You may be running from it. You may say, I can't do that. I can't do what God wants me to do. I'll tell you something. You can't in yourself, but you can with the Lord's help. Amen. And Paul, as an older gentleman in prison, says that, you know, I, I, I've not attained everything yet. I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm following after. What an encouragement this man of God is. I'm following after that for which I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Whatever he got a hold of me to do, that's, that's what I want to do. Amen. And then he said this in verse 13, and this is so familiar, but it's great. It's great. Every time I read it, I get something out of it. Brethren, now listen, Paul's talking to the brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark. I was reading behind somebody and they, they kind of use the term, this is thinking about I, I kind of like a, I'm in hot pursuit. We don't want nobody in hot pursuit after us, do we? With a blue light on. 
But think about that hot pursuit. You've seen these maybe on television or something and or maybe you've seen it in person of how a patrolman or a trooper, you know, they come up behind you. They come up behind you, you look in the rearview mirror and there's a blue light coming fast and you think, oh Lord God, what have I done? And then when he goes by, you say, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Man, they're moving on. They're in hot pursuit. They're following after somebody. Paul said, I press toward the mark. I'm going to keep pressing on. I want to encourage you to keep pressing on. I don't know, listen, I don't know what your age is, you may say, well, preacher, I'm retirement age. I'm in my 50s. I'm in my 60s. I'm in my 70s. I'm in my 80s. I want to encourage you to keep pressing on. Amen. I'll try to say something about that in just a minute. Make sure my watch ain't stopped. It ain't stopped. That's good. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Paul said, one thing I do is I want to forget those things which are behind. Now, I think most of the time when we think about that verse, we think about the fact that there's, there's bad things in people's past that keep them from doing what God wants them to do in the present. And there's no question that, that that's the case a lot of times. You and I that are saved, we have to remember that, thank God, if we've been born again, no matter how bad we've been in our past, that, thank God, we've been forgiven. Amen. My uncle, who's with the Lord now, my Uncle Wayne, Holder, my mom's, one of my mom's brothers, he used to like to pick on me, and he'd say, he'd kind of get a wink in his eye, and he'd grin real big, and this is after I've been saved for years, maybe, maybe four or five years ago, six years ago, he might have said this. It's not been all that long ago. He'd say, I remember how you used to be. And I'd grin back at him and I'd say, yes, Uncle Wayne, but thank God it, I'm a, it's under the blood. Amen. I've been forgiven. I'm glad I've been forgiven. But see, people can let those bad things hinder them. And I think that's what's most thought of when we think about this verse, forgetting those things which are behind. But I think a lot of times people rest on good things in the past that they've done. The Apostle Paul said, I, mean, I know there were bad things in his past, but there were some great things that God had used him to do in his past. And he could have said, well, I believe I'm just going to rest on what I've done. I've done some good things for the Lord. And I'm not talking about Paul bragging on himself, but maybe in his mind he's thinking, I've done some good things for God and God's blessed me. And I know it's the Lord, but, you know, I think it's just about time to hang it up. Paul wasn't about to hang it up. Paul said, I'm pressing on. And I'm forgetting those things that are behind. And I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. What's hindering you and me from reaching forth unto those things that are before or ahead of us? I mean, that's what God wants us to do. I thank God, and I don't, I don't want this to come across as bragging. If I am, I'm bragging on the Lord. But I thank the Lord for everything that the Lord's blessed me to be able to do since God saved me. I'm just telling you, I never would have dreamed God would use somebody like me, giving him all the glory for the things that he's allowed me to be able to do since he saved me. But he's not done with me yet. I need to reach forth unto those things which are before or those things which are ahead. In other words, what do, you, what do you think he means when he says forgetting those things which are behind? We can't wipe them out of our mind, but I think what he's saying is this. Don't let your past, good or bad, I don't need to let my past, good or bad, keep me from doing what God wants me to do in the present. You visit people. Many of you preachers have done this and other folks have done this. Visit people. And I'm not talking about people that's not they're not physically able to go to church. I'm talking about people that just don't go no more. And they say, I used to teach Sunday school. I used to preach. I used to be a deacon. I used to sing in the choir. I used to lead the choir. I used to play an instrument in church. I used to drive a church van. I used to drive the church bus. I used to ride on the church bus with somebody and help them. And I used to do this. And, but, and let me tell you something. All those things are good. But what about now? I think God wants to stretch us. I think God's stretching me. I think God wants to stretch us. Paul said, I ain't quitting. He said, I'm going to forget the things that are behind and I'm going to reach forth unto those things which are ahead of me or before me. And I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm pressing towards the mark. I want to encourage you tonight to keep pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 to preach the word. Preach the word. 
Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He goes on to say, I fought a good fight. Amen. I finished my course. Now when he wrote that, he knew he was about done. I've kept the faith. I want to finish right. I'm concerned about some folks at the church that they, they've slacked up in, in their Christian walk. They've slacked up in their faithfulness. I'm not talking about folk that can't come anymore. I'm talking about folk that could, but they just don't think it's important like they used to. I tell them, I say, listen, if you want the preacher to get up when you die, if you want the preacher to get up and talk about how faithful you were, you need to be faithful. Amen. He ain't going to lie about it. Amen? The man of God ain't going to lie about it anyway. But listen, let's press on. Let's keep pressing on. I press toward the mark. Lord, help me to keep pressing on. Don't let your past, I know I'm repeating myself. Don't worry. You say, I don't know about him. He's preaching himself. I'm doing it for a reason. I want you to think about it. Don't let your past, good or bad, keep you or me from doing what God wants us to do right now. Right now. It's easy to get in our comfort zone, isn't it? I'm going to be leaving out uh, Monday morning, going on a mission trip to New Mexico, be coming back Thursday, and that's outside my comfort zone. You say, is it, is it the flying no, I've, I've, I've flown before once. Wasn't bad at all. Prayed a lot. How about y'all? Y'all pray a lot when you fly. Makes you pray more. But I don't know exactly all the circumstances down there where we're going. I know I'm going with some preacher friends and different ones. Brother Darrell Cox puts this meeting on out there on the Indian Reservation. I'm looking forward to going, but it's going to be a little bit out of my comfort zone. But I believe the Lord wants us to go or I wouldn't go. And I thank God for this opportunity. This is something new for me. Something new for me. But I'm looking forward to it. I want to press on for God. My dad, I'll close with this. My dad, he told me about a year ago, he said, son, my dad's 89. His health is getting bad. Still, mom and dad still live at home. She's 85. He's 89. They still live at home by themselves. But uh, dad told me about a year ago he wasn't doing good. Dad said, uh, he said, son, he said, I just don't feel like I'm of any good to anybody anymore. I didn't hardly know what to say. Broke my heart. I said, Dad, you are too. I said, you're a great encouragement to us. I said, you're a help. And we love you. And we don't want you to give up. I want you to keep going. I want you to press on, press on. He hadn't told me that anymore. He may have felt that at times, but he hadn't told me that anymore. You may feel like that sometimes. I just don't know if God's got anything else for me to do. I don't know if God's done with me or not. Can I, can I tell you something tonight? If you're saved by the grace of God, he ain't done with you. And you say, preacher, how do you know? Well, it ain't because I know it all, but I know this. If you're still here, he's not done with you. He's not done with you. There's a preacher some of y'all may would remember up towards Mount Airy, Jack Cass Stevens. He's dead now. He's with the Lord. He's not dead. He's with the Lord. Passed away. When Jack was, he had uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, real bad, to nursing home. And uh, they would roll him into my nursing home services where I was having it at. And uh, he was in a bed, laid back, preached the gospel for years, faithful. And uh, I would sing and I'd just watch him while I was singing and uh, no response, nothing. And I thought, man, I don't even have a clue if he's getting anything out of this or hearing anything. I don't even know if he even knows he's in the room with us. And I, I was singing all the songs, and I got to Amazing Grace, and I sang Amazing Grace, and I watched him as I was singing each verse. And when I got to the last verse, I, I did that praise God, just like you'd sing the melody, praise God. And when I got to that part, his hand went straight up in there. <laughs> And he held it up the whole time I was singing that last verse. And I thought to myself, you know, people may say, why has God still got Jack Cass Stevens here? Why is he even still on earth? Why hasn't God took him to heaven? Well, I know one reason, because I about come unglued when that hand went up. He blessed my heart. There's a lady at uh, Central Continuing Care in Mount Airy, and her name is, what well, just left me, Peggy Moore. Peggy Moore. She taught Nathan piano when he was about eight years old. 
And I've got a hymn book that I carry with me to nursing homes. And there's one of the songs in there. I believe it's What a Friend We Have in Jesus or Farther Along, one or the other. And she's, her, her handwriting is when Nathan was about eight. Listen, her handwriting, she had wrote down the notes where he would play that on the piano. And I was there the other day and they rolled Peggy into the service. And I don't even know if Peggy even knows anything, whether I'm even in there or not. She's got some kind of problem where she's just moving all the time. Her legs are moving. Her arms are moving. She just can't hold still. And, and I can talk to her and call her name and there's no response. But I want to tell you something. When they roll her in the room and I see her in that room with me and I look at her and I think about what a blessing she was to me and to my wife and teaching Nathan how to play the piano and giving him a good foundation for other instruments that he's learned. Just looking at her, bless my heart. Listen, you say, why is Peggy Moore still here? Because listen, God ain't done with her. And God ain't done with you. So let's do something. Listen, let's forget those things that are behind. Let's reach forth unto those things which are before. And let's keep pressing on. Amen. Keep pressing on. If you don't know Jesus, call on him today. God bless you. Thank you, preacher.